Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome back to another video on the channel where today we have got an incredible aggressive defending style tutorial. Now I know a lot of you guys have wanted to see a lot of like defending tutorials and some more tutorials on the channel. So today we have got an aggressive defending tutorial, which is always a good thing to have in your uh, in your arsenal. Another string to your bow when you're playing FIFA. It just is going to make you a more well-rounded FIFA player. And hopefully you guys will take away something positive from this video. So if you want to see more tutorials, do drop a thumbs up on the video. Make sure you hit that subscribe button if you are new to the channel. But so first off, we need to go into learning the basics of this. So now going into what is the defending tutorial, what is an aggressive defending tutorial? Well, now first we need to understand what the difference is between aggressive, ag an aggressive defending tactic and a conservative. Now the way that most people will defend in this game, you can see what we are controlling Alan at the minute. We're running back towards our goal. Our back four is in a good position. Maybe uh, Koulibaly, our left centre back, is maybe a little bit narrower. Maybe Alan should be uh, our left back, Alexandro should maybe be a little bit narrower. But ultimately, our back four is in a good position. And what, what most people will tend to do is they'll track, they'll tend to track back with one of their midfielders and cover it that space in front of their back four, which is a good way of defending. But it is a conservative way of defending because by tracking with your midfielder, you're never going to make. You can see the distance between Alan and the ball carrier. We're never going to intercept the ball. We're never going to go and make a tackle. So it's quite a conservative way of defending. You kind of always. You know, off the play, you're always behind the play. You know, you're always kind of a step behind. I feel like when you track with your midfielder, especially if you're someone that is on a counter attack and you're running back with your midfielder, you're always kind of a step behind. So you're never going to make those interceptions. So the only way you're going to intercept the ball, hence why this is an aggressive tactic, is we're going to have to go and take the ball with one of our centre backs. Now you can see when we do run the play on slowly, the space that is created from Aguero to Alan. Now you can see that at that point. Alan and Aguero were touch tight and you can see now the space that has been created between them and that gap um, between our left centre back and left back between Koulibaly and Sandro and that was the space that he was always going to try and attack so the pass was always going to come inside but now you can see the space between Alan and Aguero so if you're someone that, who does control your midfielders unfortunately you're now you can see now as I was talking about before you're now behind the play you, you're not able to catch up this play because we know that Alan hasn't got the pace to catch up with Aguero so there's no way that this Alan card is going to be able to, to catch up with uh, with Aguero. So what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to switch to our centre back, and you can see that's exactly what we do do is we uh, we go and switch ahead to Koulibaly, and then we go and make the tackle. You know, as simple as that. So it's, it's being being a little bit aggressive. It's becoming a proactive defender rather than a reactive defender. And you can see that this actual. Um, spout of defending that we did going and going and making that tackle on this ball actually yielded in a goal so hence why it's important to know how to be an aggressive defender as well so now moving into how to use this effectively now it, it, it's important when to when you when to know when to use this and when is a good time to use this now first and foremost one thing that people will probably ask is how how do we do this now for me when switching play you should always be using the right stick and it will always switch to the player in which the direction that you aim so if we flick this stick to the right it will change to the player on the right so depending on where you flick the stick um, it just gives you a better degree of accuracy rather than using one of the bumpers to, 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 ch to change player. Now how to use this effectively, now for me I always find that this is most effective um, when people are trying to pass from the outside in, it's then much easier to cut the passing lane. Now we could, now as most people would do, they would probably try and cut the lane with the midfielder. Now for me, given that this is quite an aggressive and we want to get on the front foot, now in this in this example you could, um, you could cut the passing lane with either the midfielder, given that the midfielder is so close to the passing lane you could but I think to get into the habit and, and to get used to trying to do it with your defender um, in this case we're going to do it with with the center back now given that I'm expecting him to play this pass on the inside that's pretty much what I'm expecting him to do it's pretty much his only pass that he's got on now even if he tries to pass that ball in behind and it, even if we go and try and cut the passing lane and he doesn't make that pass and he tries to pass it on the inside we do have Koulibaly to cover around Socrates to be able to cover that pass just like in the previous example where we switched between the first centre back to Koulibaly, who then just sort of shadowed the shadowed the angle and the, and the, the, the angle of the run, and then was able to just inset the ball anyway. So even if he tries to pass that ball in behind, even if we go and try and jump the lane with the centre back and we miss, uh, Koulibaly's there to get round on the cover, and, that, and that's the, that's an important thing. It's important to know that 
you need to have make, make sure you've got cover. You don't want you don't want to go kamikaze with it. You don't need to go over the top and try and win every single lane. You have to you calculated risk and, and know if you've got players to cover. If you do miss, what's the what's the worst thing that can happen? And you can see what actually happens is that we actually do go in to, we do go in to make the tackle. And again, you can see Socrates does come away with the ball. And again, on this example as well, it does yield a goal for us. So this is this is how. You know, learning how to do this properly, and it will take time. Uh, it can can yield incredible rewards because being able to, to know how to do this, that most people who will try and defend, obviously, as I alluded to before, most people that defend do use conservative defensive methods, which you know is is using their back four, letting the AI defend for them. By by me using these attacking defensive methods, yes, it will have consequences every now and then. It's not going to work a hundred percent of the time, but it will yield to a lot of attacks that if you're not already doing this method you're probably missing out on a lot of opportunities and you're probably conceding goals where you maybe think you can't do anything but actually if you do learn this technique it will yield in so many goals as you've seen already two examples we've have yielded in two goals that normally most people wouldn't have actually made so again this time around you can see that we do have Socrates and, and again that the only pass that this guy has on again I know that he's probably going to try and pass this inside or he's going to try and run the line but because I've already got a defender out there who's kind of ahead of the play I'm going to expect that he's going to try and pass this ball on the inside as most players would try and pass this ball on the inside unless they're a very very good player they maybe would hold on to possession or just take their time but a lot of people would try and pass this ball on the inside so no know, knowing that that's probably a high possibility again we try and go inside and we try and, and we try and cut out this ball but you can see we get into a great position and that pass actually doesn't come here he, he actually didn't make the pass you can see we got straight in front of that passing lane but this time around as I alluded to before it's always it's always important to know when you've got a defender to cover the fact that we've got Koulibaly across to cover all we have to do is just flick across um, using the switch and we're going to switch across to Koulibaly and he just has to shadow the run of the attacker this is an important thing if we didn't have Koulibaly here this could possibly have led to a uh, possibly could have led to a goal now if you're playing somebody given the fact that it is Lewandowski he doesn't have super high pace so we were kind of saved if this maybe would have been in someone like an Mbappe we could have been in a little bit more trouble but the fact that we do have Koulibaly across there again that's what's important it's important to know when you can and can't do this the fact that we did have Koulibaly there to cover meant that we could make this uh we could go and make this tackle we go and try and intercept the ball and we wouldn't really have too much of a risk and you can see we do switch to Koulibaly and then the attack is over so now it's important to know where to use this effectively where are the best places on the pitch to use this now for me personally the best places to use this as I said as I alluded to before when someone is on the on the outside on one of the wings and they're trying to pass the ball on the inside is where this is probably easiest to it's probably the easiest place to use it because most people will try and pass the ball inside when they're on the wing so it's quite easy to be able to read people trying to trying to pass the ball on the inside. It's always great to use it in the midfield areas, but the, for me, the most effective areas that I, that I found that had the most success was when people are on the wing trying to pass the ball on the inside. Because on the in, when they're on the wing trying to pass the ball on the inside, it's really the only pass they have on. But you can you can do this really all over the pitch. But it's important to, to note that you're not always going to win every single tackle. It's going to take practice to get good at reading those passing lanes with your centre backs. But eventually, you'll get very, very good at it, and it will, it will yield, as you've already seen, it yields to a lot of possible chances and possible goals and counter attacks that you can create. Now again, you can see this is a prime example of us not doing it correctly, and it's important to show you mistakes, so it's important to be able to learn from your mistakes. Now you can see this time around, we are controlling Alan because it's important to, to, to still be able to move with your midfielders, just because we want to make the, we want to make the tackle or make the interception with the centre back, it doesn't mean that we don't control our midfielders at all. It's important to know when to switch. Now in this example, you can see the ball is uh, with Figo and we have Alan. we're controlling Alan Now, at this point, given the fact that the, the pass to, I think that's Mohamed Salah, is such an easy option, we now should be switching to Socrates. You can see the gap between uh, Salah and Socrates, our defender, is too much, given the pass that, that Figo has to make into Salah. So we now should have already switched to Socrates and you can see that actually we're still controlling Alan, and that pass is always going to come. And you can see he plays that pass in and we are a little bit too late. We do get there, but we're probably a little bit too late. But most importantly, we do miss. We're quite, we're off the lane 
and uh, and then we'll get a little bit lucky with Sandra across the cover. So it just it's important that you're not always going to get it right all the time, um, but not always are you going to make the tackle. Sometimes it's just getting across to be able to intercept the ball. Sometimes it's getting touch tight to the defender so that when he turns, as you can see there, when he turned, he turned straight into me and I was able to make the tackle. So it's important to know that not every time you do this, you're going to be 100% successful. You can see there, it's important to, to also for me, myself, to learn from my own mistakes and know that it isn't perfect and that I can do better myself as well. But ultimately if you try and master this it's just another string to your bow and it will massively massively improve your defending it's one thing that's probably took my defending personally up to a new level this year compared to previous levels being a little bit more aggressive but knowing when to do it is most important it's, it's not trying to do it 24 7 it's knowing when you can do it and it still be pretty safe and you'll it will yield in a lot more goals and probably a lot less goals conceded you know so it's something to practice and practice makes perfect there's nothing like practicing to be able to get better at these methods but that is it for the tutorial guys so if you do want to see more more, make sure you do drop a thumbs up on the video if you did enjoy this and you would like to see more as always hit that subscribe button but that is all today guys have an awesome day i'm out